Hello and welcome to Social Media Weekly episode 27th January 2021. Social Media Weekly is brought to you by Virtual Palace Marketing, rehumanizing your marketing experience. My name is Sean. This week's news, Facebook launches Facebook News in the UK. Right at the heel of UK's move to step up regulations against Facebook and all its regulatory stuff, uh, the company launches Facebook News in the region. Facebook News is a special tab that curates local news and also pays local journalists um, via a middleman company called Update. So what they do is they actually, instead of going to um, journalists one by one, local journalists one by one, they actually go to a middle person that actually works with individual uh, journalist sites and publishing sites and they work with that company, in which case in the UK it's called Upday, and they work with that company to actually pay uh, journalists and publishers for all the news that comes in uh, based on how many times, let's say, they have a ticker, right? Based on how many times this news has been read, what's the engagement rate and view, bounce rate, all that kind of stuff. And they pay Upday, um, they pay. They direct the payment towards Update, and Update will actually channel the payments down to the individual publishing and journalist sites. Facebook says they will pay up to tens of millions of pounds, where the top publishers stand to make millions a year from this agreement. This is just on Facebook itself. Facebook News is already live in the US, June 2020. Um, it's doing quite well, with similar financial agreements with their local middle people, I guess, what do they call them? Companies that aggregate uh, publishers or agencies that manage the publishers. Uh, this is Facebook's move to both reduce fake news from unreliable sources by providing us a special tab in Facebook itself to get so, uh, news from reliable sources instead of all these very weird and, you know, un unknown companies unknown journalists, and also compensate journalists and publishers for their hard work. Uh, judging by the complexity of setting up this it, with each country, we don't expect this to be rolled out to everyone so soon. It will probably take a while, maybe a year or two, before it reaches the less important countries like Malaysia. Google may leave Australia. Here's why. The Australian government has been in talks with Google over paying publishers a license fee for using their articles for a while now, uh, similar to what I said about Facebook and the UK and the US. A lot of companies are starting to set up a system to pay publishers for using their content on the platforms. But recently things escalated and Google said they may leave the country if the terms are not met. This part of the term dictates that Google, this is from the Australian government, it says that Google needs to pay publishers not only for sharing articles, but also to link to, for, for showing link to those articles. Yes, so this means that even if Google search uh, pulls up those articles, Google needs to pay the publishers not to have, like, it doesn't mean that those content are so compelling that people would go in and read the articles, right? So which means that publishers can actually make money from Google. Essentially, let's say if this rule is passed and Google stays on in Australia, um, these publishers can actually create uh, news. They try to game the SEO system, create a, the uh, news headline that actually gets people to go in and click or maybe they get headlines that don't even need to go in and click, right? All they need to do is to appear in the search results. As long as it appears in the search results, Google needs to pay the publishers. And this creates, it opens a can of massive can of worms in terms of how Google can manage all these things. And of course, essentially Google says no, because they don't want to need to create or, or change the SEO method in order to curb these kind of um, things. And so, essentially Google says no and then the Australian government responded by quote we don't respond to threats then they went on to say that Google makes a lot of money from their businesses 
and publishers who actually create content make almost nothing. This is personally, this is where I disagree as well because Google make invest a lot of time and money into the platform uh, that aggregates content and shows it to people uh, based on what they're interested in. So they essentially built uh, the search engine, improved the search engine to the level as we know of today. And that is not in essence freeloading or rent seeking from people who create content. Um, and so if there is no consensus to be made, Google stand a chance of leaving Australia. Um, if Australia stands firm and Google agrees with Australia, this create a, creates a precedence to other countries who also want similar deals with Google and Google cannot say no because they have already done that. They have already done that with Australia. So um, in a grand scheme of things, I don't think Australia is a large enough economy for Google to go up in arms over when they leave. Uh, but it also can be the beginning of a cascade um, of a, you know, of some, some, something on the foundation that, that can be lost because if other countries take this as a, as a, what is this called? As a guide to remove Google or to control Google's influence in their countries, then Google might stand to lose a lot more influence over many national borders. And uh, it is tough. So we will see what happens. So in any case, Google has also been working on paying publishers for access to their articles in Google's news app called Google News. But that is actually still being rolled out in stages. And like Facebook's news, I don't think they will roll that out very soon. Um, Google can actually fast track this Google News implementation where they pay publishers to Australia. But that isn't the case either because Australian government does, is not interested in that because they believe that that is a given. What they want is for Google to pay publishers for every search result that appears on Google's uh, page. So that is where it gets comfortable. Um, that is where it gets complicated. Instagram looking to consolidate business analytics in one dashboard. There has been uh, data and analytics available for Instagram for business and creators, but they're right now quite scattered. It's here, it's there, it's everywhere. And some data for ads even requires us to log into Facebook ads manager to access. Um, it's a bit of a legacy issue because Instagram, when it was first built, was not meant to be a standalone platform. Uh, <clears throat> when they integrated with Facebook, it was everything supposed to be built onto Facebook and all the data is taken from Facebook. So Instagram by itself is quite light and simple and therefore have very minimal support for creators and businesses. Um, that's, that's about to change. Instagram is working on bringing as much of these data as possible into one powerful dashboard so we don't have to look anywhere else for them. This is in line with the company's ongoing effort to increase support for small businesses, especially during these trying times. The dashboard will also contain tutorial and articles that help businesses and creators. So if you find that you are a business or a creator who's struggling on Instagram, then you can probably look at these tutorials. I mean, Personally, I don't think there'd be much help because um, Facebook isn't very good at teaching people how to use their platform because they're not very good at knowing how it works. They just know how to maintain the platform as it is and allow the users to do as they wish. I think you are better off spending your time learning from top influencers in your industry and in your niche than going through Instagrams. But of course you can learn about where to find the analytics and what they mean from the tutorials and articles. That could help. Don't know how to use TikTok? There is a creator portal for that. Last week, TikTok released a giant repository of articles and videos on how to use TikTok as a creator. Honestly, it kind of got me interested in and I got into it and watched a little bit of stuff and they kind of used, they well, not kind of, they used... TikTok influencers to help create those videos as well. I think it's kind of fun. Uh, it includes tips on content strategies, uh, reading articles, uh, sorry, reading analytics, 
community guidelines and how to get paid as a creator. Um, and if you find that you are a business or a user in general who's struggling to get into TikTok but very interested, uh, you can head on over to tiktok.com backslash creator to have a go. Uh, watch everything you need and see if it gets you anywhere. I've been, personally, I've been struggling to get businesses on the TikTok because TikTok is too uh, entertainment and less business. So there are, however, some businesses who can afford, can do it well on TikTok. Um, but for ours, it's still a little bit of um, hit and miss. And we are still studying it very closely and seeing how it can be translated into um, our industry and what we can do with it. And even after watching quite a bit, I think it's a lot more on entertainment rather than um, business related or educational or informative platform. And because it's quite, um, what is this called? It's quite native and it's very different from other platforms. So it requires a little bit more attention to build specifically for TikTok uh, rather than what we are doing now, which is we are building for one content for cross-platform. Twitter buys newsletter platform Review, R-E-V-U-E. Review is a newsletter platform built for publishers to make money off subscriptions to their email newsletter content. Uh, the people are tired of uh, the lack of support social media has been providing to publishers. Uh, Facebook provided support to publishers last time, but they took it away. And so publishers are thinking they can't really rely on social media platforms because whatever the social media platform gives, they can take it away. So they have been moving back into email newsletters in hopes of monetizing their work directly with the users. Twitter's purchase of Review hopes to bring similar support to publishers using its platform. Um, Twitter remains the discovery platform for users and the publishers. And Review is where users sign up for more content. So this is how it goes, right? Um, <clears throat> review is where people go to for, let's say, if you like someone who writes a lot of content and you want to support them and you want to get maybe daily newsletters from them or weekly newsletters from them, you pay, let's say, $1, $2, $3 a month to get all these to subscribe into it. And then they will push content into your platform. So then the writers will actually write the content using review and then disseminate it out. And they can manage all the users and do the whole dripping stuff as well. But it's specifically for publishers. So it is a subscription platform. Then where Twitter comes in is that Twitter is a place where the discovery happens or the kind of like a sneak peek happens. Say for example, let's say for example, uh, uh, Ben Thompson from Stratechery, he writes a new article that gives an opinion on a new, let's say maybe the Apple M1 and how it's affecting the economy versus Intel and AMD and stuff like that. And it's a long article, right? And then what he does is he drops a leak or sneak peek or a teaser onto Twitter. And then he says, uh, read the full article here, uh, subscribe more and stuff like that. So Twitter wants to be that discovery and sneak peek platform where they use review as a place to, to bring the publishers, uh, to bring the users into the publisher's content on the long haul. Uh, Twitter says that review will operate as an independent entity but Twitter's purchase has made the pro level of its service free for all users. Paid newsletter fee has also been lowered by 5% across the board, uh, compensated by Twitter. So this is Twitter's way of getting publishers to get on board and getting users to get on board as well, which is quite interesting because where Facebook is paying billions to publishers for content to be on a newsfeed and free for people, and Facebook is doing it with Sorry, Google is doing it with Google News. So Twitter is also doing the same thing, uh, but they're using review because they believe that this is the way to support the publishers who are already on review and who are already using newsletters as a way to monetize themselves. All right, so that's all for Social Media Weekly this week. Social Media Weekly's podcast is available on Anchor FM, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and more. Our full videos are available on YouTube, and we post bits and clips on Instagram and Facebook. This is Social Media Weekly, 
episode 27th, January 2021. My name is Sean. Stay safe. See you next week. Au revoir.